Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, hundreds protest violence against Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. South African police open fire at protests held in solidarity with Swaziland. Former US prosecutor indicted for misconduct in the Ahmed Arbery case. Protests held in El Salvador against the adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. And in our video section, we take a look at Palestinian health activist Shata Ode completing two months in Israeli detention. In our first story, protests were held across the occupied Palestinian territories in Gaza on the night of September 8th. Hundreds of people denounced the violence against Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. Occupying forces fired tear gas, rubber-coated bullets and live ammunition at the protesters. The Red Crescent stated that at least 100 people were injured in the occupied West Bank. At least four people were also injured in the occupied East Jerusalem. Earlier on Wednesday, Palestinians in the Ketzet prison in the Negev region set fire to seven rooms. These were in response to raids carried out by Israeli soldiers and special units in the prison section 6. Officials are planning to separate and relocate 400 prisoners associated with the Islamic Jihad group. Similar fires were also reported in other facilities including the Rimon prison. Israel has escalated a violent crackdown on imprisoned Palestinians. This followed the escape of six people from the high security Gilboa prison. As reported by Middle East Eye, detainees have been banned from leaving their rooms. They have also been deprived of facilities such as sinks, kitchens and cafeterias. 90 out of the 360 Palestinians being held in Gilboa have been relocated. Prison authorities have also banned family visits for all Palestinian prisoners this month. Israel has reportedly used this form of collective punishment in clear violation of international law. Riots group Adamir has also accused the Shin Bet agency of using various forms of torture against prisoners. The Palestinian Prisoner Society has stated that a large-scale detention campaign is underway in the occupied West Bank. Seven relatives of the Gilboa prison escapees have been arrested so far. The Israeli military has extended a general closure to the West Bank till Friday. Checkpoints have been set up and an army mission has been deployed to Jenin. In our next story, several people were injured after South African police opened fire at a protest on September 9th. Members of the Congress of South African Trade Unions, COSATU, had blockaded the Matsomo border gate. The protest was organized as part of the Global Week of Action for Democracy in Swaziland. COSATU stated that several people were left injured and the protest ended. However, people regrouped sometime later to continue the blockade. Similar protests were also held at other border gates. Members of the Communist Party of Swaziland also participated in the solidarity actions. The country has been witnessing renewed protests to demand an end to the monarchical rule. Mobilizations have spread across rural and urban areas despite a violent crackdown by state forces. People are demanding a democratic political system and socio-economic reforms. We now go to the US where a former prosecutor has been charged with misconduct over her handling of the murder of Ahmed Arbery. He was jogging in a neighborhood in the state of Georgia when he was chased by three men in February 2020. Among them were Travis McMichael, his father Greg and William Bright. Travis McMichael was shot, shot 25-year-old Arbery with a shotgun. The three men were not charged for the killing until more than two months later. Jackie Johnson was the Brunswick Judicial Circuit District Attorney at the time. In March 2020, two police officers accused Johnson of trying to delay the investigation by refusing to arrest the three men. Greg McMichael had worked as an investigator in Johnson's office for years. He reportedly also called her after the murder to seek legal advice. Johnson tried to have the case transferred to the neighbouring district citing a conflict of interest. The outside prosecutor, George Barnhill himself, also recused from the case. However, Associated Press reported he had already written a letter to the police saying that he believed the shooting of Arbery was justified. The State Attorney General requested a misconduct investigation into Johnson last year. She was indicted by a grand jury on a felony charge of violating her oath in office. She is also facing a misdemeanor count of obstructing the police. She was booked at a jail in Georgia on September 8th and then released. Hundreds of people held a protest in the capital of El Salvador earlier this week. The country became the first in the world to accept the Bitcoin cryptocurrency as a legal tender. Protesters argued that Bitcoin would create uncertainty and would be unsuitable for small vendors. Others feared that the currency's volatility could impact their incomes. Protesters also argued that it would only benefit big investors and facilitate money laundering. The decision has been condemned by the country's opposition parties. El Salvador is already among one of the poorest countries in Latin America. 70% of its citizens do not even have a bank account and many live below the poverty line. Moreover, only one third of the population uses the internet. The administration of President Nayib Bukele purchased 400 bitcoins worth 20 million US dollars. The same day, the value of the currency crashed to its lowest value in a month. This caused the country to lose 3 million dollars in one day. And finally, it's been over two months since Shata Ode was arrested by Israeli occupying forces. She is the director of the Palestinian Health Work Committees. She was arrested without a warrant at a house at Ramallah in the early hours of July 7th. It was only on July 26th 
as the Israeli military announced the charges against her. These include holding a position in an unlawful association and bringing funds illegally into the occupied West Bank. She was also accused of receiving funds and using documents fraudulently. Shata Ode's detention has been extended multiple times with the next hearing scheduled for October 4th. Moreover, despite being a civilian, her case is being reviewed by military judges. We talked to her daughter, Shirin Abu Fanune, about the conditions of her detention. Shata Ode, nurse and director of the Health Work Committees in Palestine, was arrested by Israeli occupying forces on July 7, 2021. The arrest came after a ban on health work committees operations implemented as part of a wider strategy for limiting the reach of Palestinian civil society by the Israeli occupying forces. Today, we speak with Shata's daughter, Shuin, about the latest developments in the case and the stifling of civil society voices in Palestine at the hands of the IOM. My name is Delenda de La Paz, a health activist from the People's Health Movement's thematic circle on health in settings of war and conflict. Welcome, Shireen, and thank you for meeting with me and um, being with me in this uh, forum to discuss the latest developments on uh, the situation of your mother, Shata. First of all, I'd like to ask, could you describe the night of the arrest and the chain charges that were brought against Shata? Yes. Um, I just have to say on the, the, the raid on our house in Ramallah happened on the night of the 7th of July. I wasn't in Palestine back then. I was uh, still traveling, packing. And uh, um, what I know from, according to the family members, especially my sister and my father, is that around 2 a.m. in the morning, the Israeli uh, occupying forces raided our house. Uh, they forcibly detained my mother. They terrorized the family. We had uh, family members uh, visiting us uh, on that day, so I had my aunties, uh, one of my cousins and her children. Um, they came, the Israeli soldiers, they were knocking uh, uh, really hard on our door. Uh, they uh, then uh, <clears throat> came in. When they came in, they were asking, where is Shada? Uh, and uh, she introduced uh, herself. She said, I'm, I'm Shada. She, they told her, go get your ID, uh, give us the keys to the car of the association that is usually with uh, with her as uh, she is the general director of the organization. And uh, they told her to give uh, her cell phone, uh, the one that she uses for personal and uh, for uh, work uh, work calls and then they put all the family members in uh, in the living area and uh, they told my mom to go get dressed uh, because uh, they want to speak to her and then they told the family members that they are going to be taking my mom to do an interrogation with her at Ofer uh, military camp which is uh, just like it's inside, the, it's very close to Ramallah, and uh, that the uh, interrogation will last from 8 uh, a.m., the same day on the 7th, until uh, 10, and by 10 uh, a.m., uh, she will call her husband to come and pick her up. There's nothing to be worried about, etc., and that they needed to leave now, now. And so they took my mom, they told her, bring your medication with you. So she came out holding her medication. She wasn't allowed to take a, a bag or anything to hold them. She gave them uh, her cell phone, uh, her cell phone, the keys to the car. And they told her, okay, now you can say goodbye to them. She wasn't allowed to hug anyone or to say, to give kisses or anything. No one was allowed to accompany her while she was dressing and while she was, she was being taken outside and they told the family members uh, no one is supposed to no one no one should uh, follow us and uh, and uh, that's it they closed the door and no one no one basically followed them and uh, she was taken to um, to a military camp uh, which is Atara it's not close to Birzeit Regarding the charges that the, they were bringing against my mother, it was only on the 27th 
uh, of uh, the 26th of July, sorry, uh, during the fourth hearing of my mom. Uh, this is when the military prosecution presented five charges against her, which are the following. First, they were talking about holding a position in unlawful association. They were referring to an Israeli military to an Israeli military order uh, by the military commander, which was announced on the 22nd of January 2020, that described uh, the Health Work Committee's uh, organization as an unlawful organization, but they did not inform any of the employees of this decision, neither also the Palestinian Authority. The second uh, charge uh, that they brought against her was in relation to a presence in a public event on the 14th of May 2019. Um, this is based on uh, the military prosecution basically was referring to an event commemorating the death of uh, Dr. Rabah Mhanna and others. The public, this was a public event that was attended by many Palestinians including political figures but they are referring to it as if it was uh, illegal. The third charge was related to receiving and bringing funds illegally into the area. And uh, here by the area, uh, the military prosecution was referring to the occupied West Bank. And uh, the fourth charge was receiving funds and support fraudulently. And uh, they are referring to the funds allocated for the activities of health work committees. And then the fifth charge was the fraudulent use of documents. And they are basically, the, the Israeli military prosecution alleges that these documents, um, the documents of the organization are forged. Um, so these are the main five charges that are brought against my mother. Yeah, I could imagine it must be very hard for Shata because uh, especially health-wise, you know, uh, Shata was my roommate in uh, Bangkok in January of 2019, when we attended the steering committee of the People's Health Movement. She was then the coordinator of the MENA region, the Middle East, North Africa region. And I was uh, ending my term as coordinator of Southeast Asia, Australia mm -hmm. and Pacific. And we shared a room in the hotel. And she was telling me about also uh, her work in uh, Palestine. So I can really imagine how these uh, charges could have really been fabricated because these are all legal activities. So how, how can they be illegal? After the arrest, would you know how she was treated for the next few weeks in the area where she was put in prison? How are they being treated as prisoners? Yeah, um, it, it's, it's very, very, uh, difficult, obviously. Um, basically, as you mentioned, my mom, uh, she has, her health is basically extremely compromised. Her conditions, uh, her health condition is very critical. She's diagnosed with chronic uh, illnesses, including hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, diabetes, and irritable bowel syndrome. Um, she, on a, on a daily basis, she takes uh, about eight uh, medications. Um, one of her medications that is specifically for the irritable bowel syndrome, uh, she was denied to take it uh, for up until the 15th of July, only after basically the lawyer presented a report explaining why this medication is important to her. This is when she actually managed to take it. At the beginning, when they arrested her, they took her to offer for doing the investigation and what I know from the lawyers is that uh, just before the interrogation started, she, her, her, her diabetes level went up and it was very risky because this means that she could enter into a coma easily. And so they had to stop the interrogation, uh, try to, um, to manage the, uh, the diabetes level in order for her to continue with, uh, with the interrogation. Also, um, up until the third hearing, up until then, basically my mother did not have any underclothing or clothes to change. It wasn't until the 18th of July, which was a Sunday, when she was allowed to have some of her clothes. This is with regard to, to the clothes. And then uh, 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 
she was also asking to be changed, like because the Hasharon is like a detention facility. So this is where the deten the female detainees are usually kept uh, when they had court hearings or when they are still uh, undergoing investigations. But the uh, the conditions of uh, this uh, prison this this uh, prison is very very difficult. Um, first of all, they're not clean. Like she was allowed to get only one blanket. She did not have a pillow. Uh, her room was disgusting. It's full of insects. Uh, they had a surveillance camera the whole time in their room. Obviously, they weren't allowed to have access to proper food uh, back at Hasharon detention facility. She was only allowed, for, like for smokers, they are only allowed to three cigarettes per day. And uh, obviously the food was very, very uh, bad. And that's the reason why she lost nine kilos. Uh, not to mention, obviously, the stress. When she had to do, uh, when she had to undergo any of the investigation, she was moved from Hasharon prison to uh, Ufer camp. Usually the, it takes only like about an hour and a half, uh, or like a ride in a car from Hasharon, which is between Tukarim and Natanya Road, uh, to get to Ufer uh, camp in, in, uh, in Ramallah. But the problem is the Bosta, which is basically a, a method of transfer that they do to the detainees. They take them from one prison, they take all the prisoners who have hearings or investigations from the other prisons, so she does a tour of all these uh, all these prisons uh, until she reaches Ufar at 8 a.m. in the morning. So she wakes up at 2.30, they tell her to get ready, they go inside the bus, uh, usually the bus uh, for the females, they have like a, a special room, a metal special room inside the bus. So imagine we're talking about uh, a very, very uh, hot weather, She's kept inside this uh, room, shackled the whole time from her wrists, from her feet, and not allowed to have access to the toilet, anything. And then up until they reach uh, offer at 8 a.m. in the morning, they do the interrogation, and then she's put back in, inside one of the metal rooms at, uh, at offer uh, military camp, waiting until uh, all the other detainees, prisoners, they finish their interrogation, their hearings, and then they leave at 6 p.m. and they go back to uh, the prisons. By the time she reaches Hasharon detention facility, it's already midnight. We're talking about 24 hours of journey that she has to do the whole time shackled. And obviously the interrogation, when it started at the beginning, she did not have access to her lawyer. So when they wanted to start the first interrogation on the 7th of, of July, she asked them she wanted to uh, talk to her lawyer. She wanted her lawyer's presence. They told her she's not allowed, but then because she insisted and she said, I will not start the interrogation, uh, they told her, um, okay, you are allowed to call your lawyer on the phone, which she did. And obviously we're talking about hearings that were done in Hebrew a language that she doesn't understand, neither of us understand it. And there was very, very poor translation to Arabic. Uh, so to follow up on, on what is happening in the court, that was even impossible, like we couldn't understand. The only thing we understood at the end was basically, uh, um, there's going to be another court hearing on, on this date. Uh, what about uh, the civil society organizations in Palestine? How are they uh, doing now? How is this issue affecting them? Has there been also an increase in oppression among the CSOs? I mean, uh, it's, it's clearly a, um, a systematic policy and practice against civil society. Uh, I mean, the health work committees was raided and closed uh, on the uh, on the 9th of June 2021 but before that since 2019 the health work committees was raided four times and the last time is the one where they closed it with a military order saying that this is an unlawful uh, organization saying that they are closing it for security reasons uh, very ambiguous without actually explaining what is the security threat exactly. And then uh, on the same day, uh, oh no, on the 29th, uh, the Defense uh, for Children International Palestine Organization was raided 
And on the same day, another uh, organization was raided, which was the Bisan Center. And on the same day of uh, the arrest of my mother on the 7th, they closed also uh, the health agriculture committees. Uh, um, uh, they closed it and also for the same thing for uh, security reasons. Uh, the funny thing is also in the list of charges against my mother, they mentioned that all these organizations, they are terrorist organization, and they mentioned seven organizations, saying that these these organizations are all uh, uh, are all like uh, uh, illegal and they are operating illegally. I mean, without any kind of basis, just saying that uh, they are terrorist organization, they're giving uh, uh, services to a specific uh, political uh, party, which is absolutely, uh, absolutely ridiculous. These are just the organization. Imagine the only organization that we have in Palestine that works on children's rights, the DCI, is now considered a terrorist organization. But uh, I mean, I mean, I think this is the price sometimes maybe that we as Palestinians, we have to pay. And uh, I believe in, in, in our organizations. I believe in, uh, in the fight that we are doing as Palestinians and that this is not an issue that will end. Uh, I mean, it's, it's continuous. This is, a, this is something that we will keep fighting for our rights uh, to enjoy them like any other human beings around the world. And uh, I mean, I know that uh, Palestinian people are resilient and there are so many initiatives that are going on locally and internationally to, uh, to, to criticize what is going on and to stop this crackdown on the civil society. Thank you so much, uh, Shireen, for sharing all this with me today. And I'm, I'm sorry if it again uh, raised a lot of uh, issues that made you uh, really emotional about it, but it's something that we, the People's Health Movement and the People's Dispatch are in solidarity with, with you and your family, with Shata, of course, because we know her personally, and with everybody else who are fighting for the right to live in Palestine. We really have to call out on the international groups that we have to stop the aggressive forces and the oppressive forces of the Israeli occupying uh, uh, forces that are now really uh, impinging on the rights of the Palestinian people. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.